I still have an Amazon Kindle Fire. I'm uh, pretty happy, or at least happy enough with it, if only because uh, it gives me a chance to um, do things that I couldn't do without a Kindle Fire. The tablet computing space is heating up, and Amazon pretty much rules the roost as far as low-cost uh, tablet experiences are concerned. Uh, you know, for $200, you really can't complain too much when things don't work as well as, say, devices that run in the $500 and beyond range. So we know there are many, many Kindle Fire users out there. You may be one of them. You may know of one of them. Cool. Uh, you might be interested in the story that we just posted on Locker Gnome. Our 10 must-have Kindle Fire ticks. Ticks. <laughs> no, not that there are any kind of blood-sucking things on the Kindle Fire that I know of. Tips! Uh, so, uh, we've got some tips for you. Uh, one is with the Silk Browser. Uh, the way that Amazon has crafted the uh, default web browser experience on the Kindle Fire is that uh, things can run pretty quickly, but when things don't seem to be running very smoothly, at least as far as the data being pulled down is concerned, and remember, it's, it's still a web browser. Uh, you can go into the menu in settings and then clear all cookie data, clear cache, and clear history if you don't want to be tracked. So remember, when you pick up someone else's Kindle Fire, you can browse their history if you want. Uh, or if you do something on there that you don't want anybody to see, you go in there and you clear the data, okay? Clear the data. Two, you can transfer files using send to Kindle. So uh, if, to locate your Kindle email address, you go to settings, more, and then my account. I think I have like five different Kindles registered. Not all of them, Kindle Fire, certainly. Uh, but if you want to go, to amazon.com slash manage your Kindle. Uh, you can choose your sent from and then uh, your address to the approved personal document email list and then send documents to your Kindle, like PDFs. Now there's a 50 megabyte file size restriction, but the nice thing about this is you can be on your desktop and you see something, oh, an ebook someone sends you. Uh, you just drag the PDF into an email, send it off to uh, your, uh, uh, your Kindle account and then it'll show up on your Kindle. Kind of nice. So consider that you can transfer files uh, by using Send to Kindle. Not just PDFs, of course, but other file types as well. Quick Office. Now that comes pre-installed with Amazon's Kindle Fire. Uh, you could use the built-in file manager and the search assist feature uh, to help you find any open documents you saved on your Kindle from Google Docs. Uh, so it, if that doesn't help you, you could also use an application called ES File Explorer. It is free, by the way. Uh, so uh, you can create documents on the go with the Kindle Fire. So it's not exactly like a typical, uh, or I should say traditional Windows computer, uh, but you know, it's, it's enough to get the job done sometimes. You know, if you just need to key in a few words, uh, send off an email, browse a web page, create a document, uh, you could do it. Well, even if you want to create like a presentation, you could do that on Kindle Fire. Spreadsheet, Kindle Fire can help you. And Quick Office comes pre-installed if you didn't know it. Uh, keyboard Quick Numbers, uh, there's a trick you can use uh, in, in, if you want to insert a number. To insert the number, hold down any one of the keys on the top row of the keyboard. The number above it will appear in orange and then will be automatically added to the document. So you can essentially press and hold. So like the Q, if you press and hold, a one will appear above it. Isn't that kind of neat? I, I don't, did you guys even know you could do that? Uh, it's kind of nice. You, you were using an alternative keyboard on uh, the Kindle Fire. You may consider going back to the default one. Parental controls are there for you to use if that Kindle Fire happens to exist inside a, a house where you don't want people to buy things willy-nilly. I'm lucky enough that uh, I, I don't have to worry about that right now. At some point, I will, uh, possibly when uh, Wicket starts using uh, the Kindle Fire. Uh, not that dogs are their demographic, but at some point in the future, we, we plan on having kids, don't we, hun? How many? <laughs> Two? Three? Yeah. Three? Two or three. Two or three. I'd hesitate to be that third one. <laughs> the or. You were an or. If, if my third child is watching this video, you were a possibility. Where is that link going to take me? Here's another tip for you. Uh, if you want to avoid the problem on your Kindle, long press on a link and the window will appear with several options. So don't just tap the link to go there. Press and hold. You'll see the thing. Open, open a new tab, bookmark link, save link, copy link URL, or share link. There's tap and hold. 
little tip. You can also block pop-ups or disable the blocking of pop-ups. My recommendation is that you block them out, right? You can find more information in menu if you click the menu and then go to settings uh, and then choose the always block pop-up window settings. You can change the default search engine if you like to. Uh, you could use Yahoo or Bing or of course, like most of you are gonna do, stick with Google. You can change the web font as well, either large or huge, if you have uh, po uh, possible issues in reading text on smaller screens and don't wanna hold the, the Kindle Fire too closely. Uh, my mom would probably have to do that. She can enlarge the text automatically. Uh, you could also use a USB cable to transfer files back and forth. Uh, something that I don't think I, I really do so much anymore. I transfer files, but I don't, use much cabling. Everything I do is wireless, seemingly. Everything lives in the cloud. Why do I need to track things physically? Kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, so uh, thank you for, uh, you know, adding any tips that you might have. If you happen to have any other tips for Kindle Fire owners, uh, and I know there are many of you out there, it's pretty much the leading Android tablet today, even though a lot of people say, it's not a real Android tablet. Well, um, it runs a version of Android and it runs Android apps and allows you to install Android apps. So in my book, it's an Android tablet.